A tolerant society like your city, New York, must defend itself against the powers of darkness, the forces of hatred, the blight of ignorance. It cannot, it cannot tolerate the intolerant and survive. And this means that we must never give a free hand to those who want to subjugate us. Ladies and gentlemen, an overwhelming majority of Americans is opposed to building this mosque. But so is an overwhelming majority of people everywhere in the non-Islamic world. Because we realize, we do realize what is at stake here. We know what this so-called Cordoba Mosque really means. Imam Raouf maintains that American secular law and Sharia law are based on the same principles. Imam Raouf refuses to condemn terrorists because he says that terrorism, I quote, is a very complex question. He says, and I quote again Imam Raouf, that America is an accessory to the crime that happened on 9-11. In fact, Imam Raouf said, in the most direct sense, I quote him again, Osama bin Laden is made in the USA. And terrorism will only end if the West acknowledges the harm it has done to Muslims. Ladies and gentlemen, this crazy and idiotic remarks of this extreme Imam proves that this man should never play the game he has in mind here in Manhattan. His, his blame the West, blame America message is an insult. Americans, and by extension, all of us whose civilization was also attacked on 9-11-2001 are not to blame for what happened here nine years ago. And Osama bin Laden is not made in, the U made in the USA. And the West has never harmed Islam before Islam has harmed us all the time, centuries, over and over again. And that should stop. Most Americans do not want this so-called Cordoba Mosque to be built here because they understand that it's not only a provocation, but it's also a humiliation. They understand the trium triumphant narrative of a mosque called, named after the great mosque of Cordoba, which was constructed where a Christian cathedral stood before that land was conquered by Islam. And an overwhelming majority of Americans is opposed to building an Islamic mosque close to Ground Zero. There is no lack of mosques in New York. The contrary, dozens of buildings where Muslims can pray. It's not about the lack of space for prayer. It's about the symbolic meaning, and we should not allow that to happen here. We, Indeed, no mosque here. Ladies and gentlemen, we who have come to speak here today object to this mosque project because its promoter and its wealthy sponsors have never, never ever suggested building a center to promote tolerance and interfaith understanding where it's really needed in Saudi Arabia, in Mecca. Talking about reciprocity, in Saudi Arabia, in Mecca, it's impossible to enter, let alone build churches, synagogues, temples, or whatsoever. So why should we do that? 
Ladies and gentlemen, ordinary Americans object to the Musk project because currently no fewer than 10 major multi-million dollar Musk projects are being planned in the United States as well as dozens in Europe. While not a single church is allowed in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. While Jews are not even allowed to move their, myth, their lips on prayer on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. While, while, the oldest, while the oldest Christians in the world, the Copts, are not free to renovate their churches, let alone to build one in Egypt. My friends, that, exactly that is why we are here today. What happens in New York must be seen in the perspective of the world. The events, the events nine years ago made an enormous impact everywhere. And most people, most people, of course, shared your pain. But unfortunately, some did not. Nine years ago, when the news of the terrible atrocity in New York reached Europe, some Muslim youth danced in the streets. In a poll, in a poll in my own country, two-thirds of the Muslim immigrants in the Netherlands expressed partial or full understanding for the 9-11 terrorists. So if a mosque would be built here on ground zero, such people would feel triumphant and we should never, ever give them that feeling. Ladies and gentlemen, we, as we are standing here today, we will never betray those who died on 9-11. For their sakes, we cannot ever tolerate a mosque on ground zero. For their sakes, for their sakes, we should say loud and clear, no mosque here. Mask here. Indeed, no mask here. We, for their sakes, for their sakes, we must draw the line so that New York, rooted in Dutch tolerance, will never become new Mecca. But let us also use today to express our gratitude for the heroes of 9-11, those who went down in that Pennsylvania field, those who were standing Freedom's Watch at the Pentagon, and those who were here in New York nine years ago to risk and lose their lives for the victims. They deserve our applause. My friends, in honor of these victims, these heroes and their families, I believe that the words of Ronald Reagan, spoken in Normandy on the 40th anniversary of D-Day, resonate, resonate with new purpose on this hallowed spot. President Reagan said, and I quote, we will always remember, we will always be proud we will always be prepared so we may always be free. And we, as we are standing here, we too will always remember the victims of 9-11 and their loved ones who were left behind. We too 
will always be proud of the heroes. We will always defend liberty, democracy, and human dignity. And that's why I end with my last sentence. In the name of freedom, no mosque here. Thank you very much. Thank you.